Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to play a game called Shattered um, Souls. This game has some um, a warning about epilepsy, so keep that in mind. So let's go right into it. Help me, someone, please help me, please. The growl of an evil creature feels like it shakes my entire room. I watch in horror as a black, mist-like creature slithers closer to me. Found you. <laughs> I co uh, cover my head with my hands and cower in the corner of my room. I want to call mom and dad. I want Chris. I don't. Uh, uh, I don't want them hurt because of me. But. I stuck in a deep breath and tried to snuffle up my scream as a monster gets closer to me. I'm scared. Please, someone, please help me. Please save me. I curl up into a ball and do my best to shield myself as the monster draws closer. It's going to eat me. I'm going to die. Whoa now, that's not very nice. I open my eyes when I hear someone's voice, but I can't see clearly. It's too dark in my room. <laughs> All I can do is see. All I can see is a very tall silhouette of a person. This person is standing between me and the monster. I pray. <sighs> <laughs> Your prey, that little girl. First, find. <sighs> okay, is this um the basilisk from um from um her pata? Ah, yes. You're the first unlucky demon to find her. That makes you my prey. <laughs> nice. The monster hisses loudly, and I jump and squeeze my eyes shut. <laughs> hey, Celeste. Oh, that is your name, right? It's the name that's all over your room, so I'm guessing it is. This is a second, okay, a second ga a tone game that we played that has the name Celeste. Want to know a secret? This is just a bad dream. A bad dream? Yep. Right now, you're sleeping in your bed, safe as can be. When you wake up in the morning, the sun will be shining, and you'll forget all about this. What... What do I need to do to make it, the monster go away? I want the monster to go away. Well, the first thing you'll need to do is sing your favorite song. Monsters are scared of happy songs. So what's your favorite one? Me go with the cousins. The only thing I can think of is Jujino Kito's favorite song. Is that, is that really happy? It's about ghost. Twinkle, twinkle, little star. Uh, I love that one. So, keep your eyes closed and start singing. The monster will be gone by the end of the song. And then, you can wake up from this bad dream. I'm going to start singing the Digimon theme song. <laughs> Or Pokemon. <laughs> Do you promise? I promise. Twinkle, twinkle, little star, how I wonder what you are. I can't really do it, that scene. <clears throat> Up above the world, it's so high, like a diamond in the sky. Twinkle, twinkle, little star, how I wonder what you are. After a moment, a horrible, a horrid sound stops. Everything is silent, but I'm too sh scared to look. Great job. The monster's gone. You did so good. <laughs> I'm proud of you for being brave. Can I wake up now? You can. But first, you need to keep your eyes closed until you can't hear anything anymore. Then you'll wake up to the sunshine. I keep my eyes and trust the voice. The voice of a man who saved me. A figure stands along, uh, alone among the mist and trees. His eyes stare mostly in the, at the first creation, his creation. My lord, what is it, Ichi? We have found the Celestial Maiden. I see. His non-committal committal response echoes the current amount of interest that he has in her. Nevertheless, Ichi continues his support. It seems the Celestial Maiden has 
entered the cycle of reincarnation, which explains her soul's disappearance. That's unexpected. As he says this, his eyes do not divert from the tree in front of him. Not only that, but it seems her soul is on the verge of completely shattering. At this, his turn says Dijin to his familiar. Shattering? Why? I am not sure, but I theorize that it stems from loss or heartbreak. It's the only thing that could damage a goddess's soul to this extent. Where's her soul, currently? In the Maiden of Earth's domain. The Maiden of Earth found her. Well, one of her demons did. I acted on my own to save the Celestial Maiden by sending Mars to intervene. How troublesome. Forgive me. He was the only one who could make it to her in time. Did Mars kill the demon that targeted the Celestial Maiden? I was going to say, why is Earth trying to attack me? <laughs> he did, but because of that, the Maiden of Earth may take note of the demon's death. She may find the Celestial Maiden, if she doesn't already know of her existence. Then assign Maris to look after her, but remind him that he must adhere to the rules of the gods. Since he is not a god of that world, he is not to intervene in the Celestial Maiden's affairs. Unless her soul is in imminent danger, he is to watch over her and report back to you. Your Eminence, the demons will target her. She is a child. She is only around eight years old at this time. If Mars can't directly interfere until her soul is endangered, then she will not last long. I mean, if she's in direct danger with the demon, he's just going to go and interfere then. The goddess extends his hands, and a small orb appears. I cannot give this to her directly due to our vow, but you can. Use it as you wish. I understand. I will give it to her. May I ask what this is? An enchantment. It will mask her soul for ten years. This should give you time to find a solution to ensure the protection of her soul. So until I'm 18, okay. This is the only time I will intervene, as I cannot break my vows. I'll leave the rest of this matter to your discretion. Yes, your eminence. Thank you. With that, Itchy turns and leaves the garden. As soon as he's alone, they bring and bring a turn. Uh, the being returns his attention to the tree. A shattered soul. What could have happened? Sixteen years later, so those eighteen, wouldn't that wouldn't that mean um no, it was eighteen. Oh, never mind. The scene never sleeps. I take a s deep breath and look out the window of my living room. The traffic bustling, uh, bustles b beneath us, and the crowd of people move in and out of the b busy streets. My gaze wanders to the sky, but the lights block the view of the stars. It won't be long until I'm able to see them again, though. Our honeymoon begins tomorrow, and soon it, 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 we will be relaxing on the beach in Fuji. I will content a sigh as I think back to the day on the day. It's been one of those most beautiful and memorable days of my life, even if it's a private ceremony, just us. My wedding dress rustles as I turn from the window and look towards the kitchen. A smile tugs at my lips when I see my husband walk towards me, a glass of trip pain in each hand. Are you enjoying the scenery, my love? You know me. I prefer stars over buildings. It's just nice in its own way, though. My hands touch the cold, uh, cold glass and I give him a grateful smile. Besides, tomorrow we'll be laying under the stars until our hearts are content. It's not something that I usually do due to my past, but I want to be brave, at least for our honeymoon. Out in the open? I'm surprised that you'd leave yourself vulnerable to attacks. Ray, uh, uh, um, 
Ray. Raylan? Oh, Ray. I'm gonna say what, Ray? Raylan mirrors my thoughts. It's our honeymoon. I don't want to spin in fear. It's never wise to let your guard down, you know. If I can't be if I can't be verbal with my husband, then who am I? Who can I be a verbal with? Technically, we aren't married yet. Legally, that is. And whose fault is that? <sighs> Mine entirely. I give him a approached look that bears a hint of playfulness. I can't believe you forgot to sign the papers. I'm sorry. It will all be resolved tomorrow. You're right, tomorrow. We'll be legally married. But we're still husband and wife tonight. We're married in the eyes of the god. And I think that we... That's even more binding than paper. Very true. Until death do us part. Which will not be very... Uh, which will not be for a long time. I had enough death to last the rest of my life. You certainly have. I return my gaze to the window and... Raylan... Ray... Uh, Ray... Uh, and... Ray... I really cannot pronounce the name. And that's another weirdly irregular name. Raylan wraps his arms around my wrist. He pulls me closer to him, and I lose myself in his warmth. The ceremony really was beautiful, but I hesitate to finish my statement. You shouldn't get mad at me, right? I wish we had to invite Grant. Uh, I wish we could uh, could have gr uh, invited Grant in Calver. Your grandmother lives ten hours away. Did you really want her traveling for such a small wedding? Uh, yes. I know, that's why I don't- I didn't push the issue with Gran. And Carver, well... You don't get along with him anymore. He probably tried to convince you not to marry me. <laughs> why? He was really close to my brother. Even if we don't get along anymore, he's still important to me too. Just not having anyone in at the wedding made me miss my family even more. I'm sure they were watching from the heavens, my love. So when did they die, and how? My mind drifts to the, my family and then to Calver. He was my brother's best friend and practically lived with us as we were growing up. Well, up until that night happened. I really wanted to invite him to our wedding, but Raylan was adamant about it being just us. I hope so. I really miss them on days like this, not having them by my side. For my own wedding shows how much I lost, you know? A small silence lingers in my com a comment, but I don't mind it. It's been five years since they were killed, but it still hurts. Have there been any new leads on the case? Any suspects? I shake my head and well, let out a heavy sigh. There are always new suspects. I mean, Father was a porn government official. He had so many Emmys that it's hard to narrow down. They all led to dead ends, though. Alibis, no motivation, lack of significant evidence, it always something. My fingers tied into a ball. Still, I will find them eventually. The man and the people who murdered my family. I'm not going to let this case run cold. I would expect nothing less from you. <clears throat> he reaches out and tucks my shoulder. It's a good a hug. One of support. Now, rather than focusing on what's currently beyond our control, let's celebrate their lives and this new beginning. He holds out his champagne glass in one direction, in my direction. You're right, sorry. I click my glass against his. To our future. I take a sip of champagne and the liquor fizzles in my mouth. Hmm? You okay? Um, yeah, it's just, uh, I take another sip. Being uh, before continuing, it tastes different than remember, but it could be that I'm not used to champagne, so its flavor is just lost on me. It's still really good, just different. I'm glad you like it. It's one of my favorites. 1926 Veuve Clicquot. I only drink this on rare occasions. 
This is a once in a lifetime op moment. I lean my head against his chest and listens to his heartbeat. It's calm and steady as always, never too fast, never too slow. It's just what attracted me to Ryan. His strength, confidence, and stability was just what I needed after losing everything dear to me. Many of my colleagues were surprised when they found I was dating someone 10 years older than me, but the age gap never mattered. He put me back together when I was broken. He became my rock and my hero. I took a sip of the sharpling, uh, sparkling vintage. It must taste different because it's vintage. I've waited so long for this moment. He squeezes my, squeezes me tightly as he says this. You and I both. Not as much as I. I would continue our, uh, I would continue arling, but knowing him, he won't give up. It'll be a happy day. I'll let him win the battle. We stand in silence for a few minutes, quietly sipping on our drinks and watching the bustling city below. I start to feel dizzy, and it's already getting tipsy. I haven't finished the glass. This is poisoning it. This champagne must be pretty strong. What's the alcohol content in this? Are you okay, dear? I'm just feeling out of... I can't even finish the sentence before my legs give out. I barely have the strength to keep myself proper, uh, popped up on all, all fours. Really, something, something's wrong. I expect him to come to my rescue. I expect him to be just as worried as me uh, as I am, but he's just standing there and he's smiling. No, I'd say this effect is expected. What do you mean was expected? I think he's a demon. I'm not drunk. My body feels really... Ah, yes. Nausea, vertigo, weakness, tightness, and pressure in your chest. Those are all the beginning symptoms. Uh, poison? You poisoned me? What? Pretty soon you'll start to have difficulty breathing. An unbearable pain will rack your entire body, causing you to convulse. Your heart rate will increase, throwing you into a tachycardic state. Until ultimately, your body just decides to give out. What are you? Oh, dearest, I told you that I only drink 1926 Veuve on rare occasions. In my case, it's to celebrate the end of a successful mission. Uh... So why did you play the long game? Can I just come with, you know, um, from the beginning? He kneels down in front of me and tenderly moves some of the hair out from my face. It's an act that has that was once romantic, but now it feels chilling and inhumane. In your case, it's the beginning of your journey to the heavens. He stands with his casual ease that doesn't fit the atmosphere. I watch in horror as he walks over the kitchen and picks up a prescription bottle. D -d Did you poison me? My arms no longer bear the strain of my body. I collapse onto the ground. Why, why would you do this? Ryan flips me over so I could see him. I try my best to push him off, to move even so much as an inch towards the door. My body, it's like concrete. I can't move. He looks at me with a relaxed, condescending glaze. He knows I'm no threat. He's got me right where he wants me. But that won't stop me from fighting with everything I have. I got to get out of here. I can't die like this. I can't let it in like this. I struggle within myself. But I froze. I'm frozen. The effects of the poison are too strong. I watch with gaping breaths as he t uh, takes my champagne glass and moves closer to my outstretched arm. What is he? The sad, desic smile he drops to the floor, then places an empty drug container a few feet away from my other uh, heavy hand. 
is make it look like a suicide. The answer is simple. Michael Warthern, Delilah Warthern, and Christopher Warthern were found deceased in the living room of their home. Oh, so you are the murderer. The cause of death was an execution-style gunshot wound to the head. The sole survivor and heir to the Warthern state, Celeste Warthern, remained alive. But he weren't supposed to be alive. It was a miscalculation on the hitman's part. Yeah, he tried to kill me. His informants mentioned that Celeste would also be in the residence. However, due to a last minute change in plans, you weren't there. You... Were you... Were you the... Now you're catching on. Why, why didn't you... Kill you immediately. Yeah, no duh. I don't do mercy killings. They're boring, unimpressive, mediocre, and way too easy. And what happens if I'm immune to poison, um, butt muncher? What if... <laughs> like, what? No. I decided to rebuild you. To show you the light in life. And reignite that spark of wanting to live. Of looking towards a bright future. I'm gonna get- I would probably be the one that gets up, stabs him in the heart, and goes, If I'm dying, you're dying too. <laughs> he kneels down beside me and stares into my eyes. His blue eyes are devoid of any emotion. Did he really uh, always look like this? Was the person he seemed so composed and strong because he was a psychopathic, uh, a psychopathic click killer? Probably. Though, um, I I would rather um ask me that yonder army. As time went on, I grew greedy. I didn't want to just kill you. I wanted to take your happiest moment and completely shatter you. Yeah, um, joke's on you. If it was me, I would be over there. I, I would just go and try to take you out too. If you, if I die, you're dying too. Body, heart, and soul. And while I was at it, I might as well take all the firsts you so willingly gave me. Sadly, all good things must come to an end. What better time to break you than on the night of our wedding? I'm um, sorry, I, I, I definitely take a note and scream and stab you. He leans down and throws a loose stratum hair with his finger. Until death do us part. I feel my s uh, teeth grin uh, uh, gritting. Riding. I just try to sit up. <clears throat> Pain wrecks my entire body. It paralyzes me, just as he said. Yet, I'm not scared about what's going to happen inside me. All I feel is rage. How could he? This man, who I loved and vowed to share my life with, murdered my entire family. How could I have been so stupid? You won't get away with this. There's a limited amount of words you can say, and you choose that? How cliche. Yeah, because I would, I would be stabbing you. Even if I die here, I won't disappear. I'll destroy you for what you've done. Yeah, it goes to me. It's like a vengeful spirit from, uh, a vengeful spirit from Supernatural. Oh, will you? I'm looking forward to it. I've never been haunted before. It sounds intriguing. Yeah, um... Take it. Um, probably be scared if it was me. I would be so, like... I would be fighting the kitchen knife and... And... While you're sleeping. I'm like... I watched... Uh, I watched Scream before. Just be sure not to attach your soul to something in this room. Otherwise, you'd be stuck here forever. <laughs> Huh, 
So what happens when I attract my soul to you? Following you around and not you wherever you go. <laughs> Mwah. Ah. I scream in agony as my body feels like it's being torn apart. Ryan looks as at his vibrating phone and returns his emotionless gaze to, m to m mine. As much as I'm loving your performance, I've got other matters to tend to. Oh, and joke's on you, I made you sign up bringing up. <laughs> I desperately tried to move my body, but the pain is unbearable. You'll pay for this. I'm sure I will. Goodbye, my wife. <laughs> I'll tackle you and sign the paperwork. So, um, and I, I would have made you sign up bringing up. Anyway, I've been told to do it. <laughs> He leaves the room and locks the door behind me. him. The sound of the, clock, of the lock is so loud, it's final. Everything around me is suddenly quiet. It's as if the world itself waited for me to die. This is it. I'm gonna die. I'm gonna die here. No, no, I can't let it in here. I can't die here. I must avenge my family. My thoughts drew it blank as tears bore my vision. The pain from the poison doesn't even compare to the brokenness in my heart. The man that I love murdered my family. The man I loved is killing me. I've been portrayed again. I feel something break inside me. I can't die here, but who can help me? Who would help me? I'm alone. I'm trapped, listening and listening to the silence, and drifting in and out of consciousness. Celeste, are you in there? Carver? Look, I know you probably don't want to see me, but I really need to talk to you. Car- <clears throat> Sully? Car- Sully! Are you okay? I hear him start pounding on the door and try to turn the knob, but it's locked. It's no use. He won't be able to get in here. I feel like star staring into consciousness. Is this really his voice or am I concussioning? Uh, That's probably it. Why would he be here in the first place? We hardly talk anymore. I feel like I can very good hear something hitting against the door before everything goes silent. Yeah, there's no way he'll be here. Celeste! Carver, the last person I thought I could see I would see again is rushing up to me. No, 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 no. Oh god, silly. He falls to his knees next to me. And I feel his hands on my body. He's checking my forehead, my pulse. And then he grabs my hand. He's shaking. So much. Has he ever been so. Uh, been this? Uh. Kevra looks over and sees the pill bottle on the floor. Damn it! Damn it, I was too late! Did Ryan do this to you? Did he do this, Sully? Oh, I. I. Brain farted on his name. <laughs> so we call him Ray Lynn instead. <laughs> he was funny. I know people all, like a whole bunch of people named Ryan. Okay, it's not gonna be named R Ryan anymore. <laughs> because I actually know people that are actually nicer than him. <laughs> He's named Raylan. <laughs> he looks a little bit. I want to tell him. I fight to get my mouth and lunge to copyright. Uh, copyright. Uh, copyright. <laughs> copyright. <laughs> I want to tell him. I fight to get my mouth in the lunge to cooperate with him. With me. Just one word. One name. Yet, all that escapes me is a slightest wheeze. I want to move my body. And I just need to nod my head, but it feels like stone. Hey! No, don't, don't, don't close, close your eyes, Sully. I'm, I'm going to get help, so stay awake. Don't you dare give up on me! You hear? I can't talk. 
I can't move. Hello? I need an ambulance. Location is 451 Broken Avenue. My friend is unresponsive. I think she's been poisoned. Please hurry. I know poisoning when I see it. I don't have time to explain. Just get someone here. Now! Then how far out are they? There should always be a unit around this area, damn it! Just hurry! I'm going to die here without getting justice again. Why do I keep saying again? What am I not remembering? Celeste, don't close your eyes. Help is on the way, so don't give up. Hey! Sally! I'm sorry. Everything is fading away. I hear Carver calling out to me, but I'm barely be- I'm, I'm una unable to see him now. The world around me is dark, murky. It's almost as if I'm under the earth itself. Is this the afterlife or am I in limbo? No, I don't want to die. I can't die yet. He has to pay for what he's done. I try my best to move my spirit. I need to get back to my body. I must tell Carver what that man did. I have to... No, no, I feel myself breaking. I feel my connection to my body slipping away. No. Not yet. I can't let this end here. I must... You poor, poor soul. Once again, you're betrayed and left to die. Aren't you tired of this? Is it loving too much? It hurts and is used against you in the worst ways. Is this the Reaper? Or made the uh, or maybe the god of the underworld? No, I have to get away before. I look away from the being and try my best to move my soul. Why don't you give your soul to me? I can give you revenge on the mortal that broke you. Uh, the, uh, oh, sorry, Damon. Nah. Her words immediately silenced my thoughts. I look over to see a woman clearly for the first time. Revenge. An exchange for my soul. I swore I would make the beast pay for what he did to me and my family, but... I mean, it also kind of reminds me of a, um, a book series. This is a heavy price to pay. I suppose it could be considered a... Decent price. However, if it gets revenge on that monster of a mortal, wouldn't it be worth it? Um, so, first of all, me selling your, my soul to you, does it mean I come back to life and I just have to serve you type thing, or you get my soul and you revenge and may not actually take the revenge? Her response to the inner. Um, con temptation surprises me. Wait, you can hear my thoughts? Yes, I hear the cries of your soul. Okay, are you Artemis from um the Dark Hunter series? <laughs> if she can hear me, then maybe she can help me. Maybe I can get revenge on the monster. Still, there's a part of me that doesn't trust this being. There's something about her that seems familiar. Who are you? <laughs> I go by many names. The people of Earth worship me as Gaia. But you can call me. Okay, so your name's Gaia, so... Yeah, nope. Uh, I read Percy Jackson. Nope. Everin. And there a voice calls through the murky shadows. I manage to turn myself to see a dark, shouted, per shouted person. I can't make out the, any distinct features. He's hazy, like he's there but not there. It's almost like he's trying to force himself into a place where he doesn't belong. God of Remor, what are you doing in my realm? Sorry to barge in uninvited, but I have business with Celeste. With me? What does the god want with me? What does the god want with me? The shattered figure reaches out his hand in my direction. It's misty and hazy, 
but since a light weren't from it. Celeste, come with me. Let's heal you and bring about a better future. A better future? Is this really such a thing? And why should she go with you? Can you truly heal her? Give her her soul's desire. No. You can't. Celeste, you should remain here with me. Take my deal. I'm the only one who understands you, and the only one who can give you your deserved revenge. I can avenge you and your family. Don't listen to her. Come with me where you have a future. I know it's uncertain and scary, but my path gives you a chance. <gasps> she kind of looks like Poison Ivy. A chance for what? Does not to work. live out her days festering in the mistakes she's made? To carry the burden of knowing she gave everything to a man who murdered her family, and she's letting him get away with it? Oh, I'm not getting- I'm, I, I'm definitely not getting away from it. Can you get, just put my soul back so I can haunt his butt? She turns my face. If you go with him, you will not be able to get your revenge. You'd sacrifice justice for your family, for an uncertain future. Okay, so I have a future- or you mean I'm gonna live? So can I come back and kick his butt myself? <laughs> I got a few, one idea from Twilight. <laughs> from one of the better characters. Um, Rosalie, <laughs> wearing the wedding dress and killing her, uh, her, um, her, um, murders. It's still a future nonetheless. Come with me, Celeste. He holds out his hand. My mind is rolling from everything that's ha happening. Two gods want me. One wants my soul in exchange for revenge, and the other wants me to take me to God knows where. It's risky either way. Gaia could take my soul and leave Ryan alone. This God could leave, could take me, and I'll never get justice. I look down as I stre an outstretched hand. He's shaking. He seems to be more concerned. Really concerned. Why? Why does he care? What happens to me? I look back at the being in front of me. Oh wait. Who should I trust? What should I do? Well, <clears throat> this is probably gonna give us a good ending. She's probably gonna give us the bad ending. Kinda want to see what happens, but let's save first. I cannot give. Uh, I can't give up on revenge. I must bring my family justice, no matter the cost. Thank you for your offer, but I choose to stay with Gaia. Please reconsider. There's so much that hasn't been explained yet. You have the answers that can save you, and I got my answers I need. Thank you, but I made my decision. I feel my soul being able to break apart as I talk. No, let me help you, please. Let me save you! It doesn't have to end like this! Your soul shattering will not solve anything! It's not good to be so desperate, God of Rumor. Go back to your realm. She's made her decision. And it's too late for you to save her anyway. My soul is breaking, tearing apart before my very eyes. Gaia, don't forget your promise to me. You have my word. In exchange for the power of your soul, the man who murdered you will reap the consequences of his actions. Thank you. I feel my energy being absorbed. My soul will be no more. But at least, I will not hurt. Farewell, sister. No! Ever and you! Out of my realm, Morris! Everyn stares down at her hand, which is now soaked in God's blood. A menaces a smile adores her face. Oh, sister, you've always been so trusting. 
It makes things much easier for me. She giggles gratefully while looking up towards the heavens. Try again. <laughs> oh, so she's not gonna kill him. <laughs> Do I really want to want to end it here? I feel like I'm being sucked into sucked in towards Gaia. Her words almost seem to beckon me, but there's something inside me that's screaming. Again, again, again. Try again. Try again. No. My words do not spawn ghostly or like an eternal thoughts. I feel something inside me pulled together so slightly. What? I'm going to let... I'm not going to let in here. I'm not going to shatter. I'll try again. Even if it isn't in this life. So you want to keep getting hurt? You want your murderer and the murderer of your family to walk free? Oh no, no. I'm gonna get my revenge. I'll come back in my next life and, and come and take revenge. <laughs> You're the god of this world, aren't you? Yes. Then why do you need my soul to intervene? I can treat it un uh, I w was treated unjustly, but I'm not the one who has to pay the ultimate price in order for him to be punished. Yeah, you're not. Uh, if it was um, artists from the Dark Heart series, you take a yes because you get you can take your revenge yourself. You just have to work as a Dark Heart for your rest of your life, your immortal life. Why do you stand for the innocent and punch the cruel? Why do you unknowingly allow people like him to walk free? It's wrong. You are still naive. Naive? Your soul is already shattering. If you do not accept my offer, you will vanish from existence. You've been hurt too much to recover. Um, I already saw what happens if I choose you. So yeah, choose another wife. No. You're broken. God reaches towards me, as if to grab my spirit, but the shadowy figure jumps in front. Not if I can help it. Will you come with me? Just say it, and it will be done. I can't move my body. If I move my spirit, I will feel like, like it will crumble. I'm in so much pain. It will be easy, easy to end it all. But the nagging voice is not. It will not leave. Try again. Try again. I look at the shadowy figure. I'll go with you. You got it. God of Ramar! In the final moment, uh, in these final moments, my mind drifts to Carver. I start to Carver. If we ever meet again, I hope I can thank you for trying to save me. Okay, I love the song. I love the animation too. My head hurts. My tired body aches. Wait, it hurts. Right, I was dying, but then I put my eyes. 
Hey there, Smexy. Uh, what? I brought up light and spin quickly, throwing everything I had into the w into a wild swing. My swing whips by, nearly missing his face. The man gently glides away, as if on a stroll through the park. <laughs> Whoa there! Pretty quick reflexes for a mortal. Terrible form, though. I recommend boxing classes. <laughs> that voice. He smiles brightly at me. Don't be alarmed. I don't bite. <laughs> Unless requested. A stupid grin replaces his annoying, annoying smile. What the heck is this guy's prop? Before I could spawn, a wave of pain shoots through my body. I'm going to collapse. Whew. You probably shouldn't have gotten up so quickly. Your body's not used to teleporting. Anyway, I apologize for the pain. I bet you're feeling like utter trash at the moment. Yep, pretty much. The transition was less than ideal, but it had to be done. The strange man smiles somewhat unapologetically. <laughs> at least it's better than being hit by truck, Coon. <laughs> Okay, he's he's been following me probably all this time. So like, and I've been watching Izakai stuff. I'm not sure about that. <laughs> My bad. Thankfully, the effects should subside in an hour or so. Water. With a of uh, of his hand, a goblet filled with crystal clear water appears, and he holds it out to me. Um, pass. He shrugs, the water vanishes as quickly as it appeared. I try to keep uh, keep my calm uh, keep my calm at everything that is happening around me. Th the first thing I need to figure out is where I am. To answer your first question, this is Ramor. To answer your next question, which I can easily read from the look on your face, I am Morris, god of wonder, god of all things amazing, god of eternal stamina, and library of lovemaking. Um, sir. Sir, this is for YouTube, so, um... Uh, I, um, what? Well, that's a thing. He's an idiot. Um, what? Uh, I, um, what? What the heck? Interjection... Uh, who the heck interjects uh, themselves like that? <laughs> but seriously, those are some of my titles. <laughs> However, for you, it's best to say that I am the god of this world, Remor. God of Remor? Right, God called the shadow figure the god of Remor. All coming back to me now. So you're the one who saved me. I thought I recognized your voice. Yes. In a manner of speaking. No pun intended. To be fair, you're not saved yet. Your soul is... still broken. Who does... what does that mean? It's like... like a mirror that's been shattered into countless pieces. And the only thing holding your soul together is my power. By bringing you to Remor, where my power is at its strongest, I was able to extend your life. But if the pieces of your soul are not repaired within six months, then you will most certainly die. Oh, so this is where the Tomo, Tomo appears. I have to get someone that I fall in love with. So my soul is breaking apart, and if not fixed within a half a year, I'm dead? Yes. Is he really happening to me? This can't be happening, right? Please tell me this is a crazy dream caused by last minute wedding jitters. Or that I read too many fantasy mawas before bed or something. My mind reels as memories fight to sort themselves. No, as reality of everything comes crashing down on me. I look at my body and see that I'm still wearing my wedding dress. My heart sinks when I see the slightly dirty dress. 
no matter what I tell myself, I know the truth of my situation. So, this is all real. As soon as I say this, all my strength leaves my body. I fell to the ground. Maris knees, uh, kneels down beside me and meets my eyes. His expression is gentle and earnest. I'm afraid so. But, Celeste, you made the right decision in coming with me. I hope you know that. No, I don't. I don't know anything. Why did you save me? Why is my soul broken? I saved you because I was asked to. But more importantly, because I wanted to. As for why your soul is broken, to be honest, I'm not sure. I take a deep breath and try to stay myself. Panic will not solve anything. So where do we go from here? Well, we're gonna fix you, and I've got just the solution. I'm listening. <laughs> Have you ever been on those dating apps? You know, that one, Adley Madsen? Um, sir? Sir? No. No, I haven't, and I'm not planning on it. The cheating app? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And this is funny because I literally just saw a video about a certain family that had a whole bunch of kids. <laughs> and certain son, son going to jail just because I saw it and I clicked it. And yeah. I mean, you're technically married. Technically, no, the paper didn't get signed. Ouch! I'm not married. You said in the eyes of. Ouch! Yeah, he tried to kill me, so I'm not married. My bad, I'm sorry! It was a joke! I, I gave him a stern look. Hmm. One that was way too soon. Sorry. All kidding aside, I've matched you up with some people who may be able to help you. Not fix you, but help you. Oh, uh, like I'd ever let someone, uh, let anyone fix me. But if things are as bad as you say, then it doesn't hurt to get help. Where do I, where do we meet them? I'll take you there, right? Lord Maris! Uh, hey, <laughs> son! I was just... <laughs> Don't even start! You've been missing for weeks, neglecting your godly duties! Do you even realize how far behind on paperwork we are, thanks to you? We've got an annual report that needs to be delivered to Itchy by tomorrow! To ma no, And you haven't written a single word on it! Uh, d d no! D d son, that, that, ouch! Okay, that, stop pulling my ear! D son, I promise Ichi will give us an extension! D ouch! We are not asking for extensions! If you can't be a responsible deity, then I will make you! I don't care what's going on, you're coming with me right now! <laughs> Sorry, Celeste. I'll... I'll be back in a little bit. While you wait, head east! Just follow the rising sun and you'll enter into a city! That's... stop, stop! But it, it, it's not an advanced one like your world, but you should be able to tell us when you get there what I'm talking about. Okay. How about the people I'm supposed to meet? Okay, don't worry. You'll know the moment, the moment you touch them, if they're distant to you. I'll be back. Ouch! Son, easy! You're ripping my ear! Ouch! <laughs> You're raising my blood pressure! I may not be mortal, but my body can only take so much stress! Hey, wait. You can't just sleep. In an instant, both Mars and Sand disappear. They left me. They just left me here. What the heck is going on? I sit back onto the ground. I feel like I'm in a dreamy haze. My mind just can't process any of this. Is all this really happening, or am I questioning? I look around. Everything is lush and green. It reminds me of when I was a little kid. It's like I'm in paradise. But something within me knows that's not heaven. I reach out and touch the grass. It's just as lush as it looks. The slightly do kiss 
blades add an extra layer of detail, which often conf confirms that it isn't fur confirms that it's not isn't a dream. Did Ryan really just kill me? I wanted to take your happiest moment and completely shatter you. His words ring in my ears, causing my body to tremble. There's no way that this was a dream. He really tried to kill me. He killed my family. I feel a sharp pain as something seems to third crack within me. The rage I feel within myself is something that I never thought possible. The amount of hate that I feel towards him is suffocating. I quietly grasp my hand, scare, and do my best to stay myself. I take a deep breath and try to calm myself as best I can. But this is not all. Why would a god save me and bring me to his world? He said he wanted he was asked to? That doesn't make sense. And why did Gaia want my soul? What's going on? My head, uh, head is throbbing, and the questions swirl through it on repeat. In order to survive, my, uh, give myself an emotional break, I return my attention to my surroundings. This garden really is beautiful. The water is perfect, and the atmosphere is so peaceful. It's completely different from the terror of last night. My mind keeps jumping between trauma and ra random, unrelated thoughts. There's a numbness that's limiting even the anger that I feel. Okay, Celeste, this isn't the time to do nothing. You've been in a similar situation before. You know you're dislocating right now. Well, you're in shock. Get what you can done. Go where you need to and do what you need to do before your available breakdown. Don't focus on anything right now. It's too much. Just follow the rising sun, take one step at a time, and continue forward. Sitting here isn't going, to, isn't going to get me anywhere. Near is thinking about the things I can't change. Just listen to Mars and turn off my mind. You can scream, cry, and completely lose it when you're somewhere else safe. The sun has just risen in the sky. After getting my bondings, I make my first decision fall the rising sun. Dusting off my strained white dress, I take a step towards my destination. I know I said that I didn't, I didn't, I didn't need to focus on anything, but do I really have to enter the city? I stayed frozen in place, just outside the village. People are dressed in fantasy style clothes. There's no cars, no form of, it, of technology. Am I really all alone? Am I alone in a completely different world? I feel like the air is taken from me. I can't catch my breath. My heart feels like it's in my throat and I feel sick. No, Celeste. This isn't a time to have a breakdown. Come on, keep it together. Keep it. Why me? Why did it have to happen to me? My legs are shaking. I lean against, my tr against a tree. How long do I have to endure this? How long do I have to be strong? What sort of twisted fate has I been dealt? Why did God bring me here? Did I even want to know why? The world around me spirals like, count oh, like the countless questions that filter from my mind. Why do I... What do I do now? Where do I go from here? What's going to happen to me? Will I ever be able to turn to Earth? Will I ever get my revenge on that man who, for what he did. What if I can't go back? What if he gets away with it? Did I make the wrong choice? Should I have given my soul to Gaia? Why did she even need my soul for revenge? I feel like I'm about to collapse when I hear what sounds like someone running from me, running behind me. Next instant, I'm knocked to the side. The little boy grabs his sister's hand and practically drags her behind him. I sit there, watching them as they disappear in the village. To the village. The will, uh, that little surprise is enough to bring me back to my senses. Get gr uh, gr uh, 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 Celeste. I say this out loud. Well, taking a deep breath, I made a promise to myself, and I wasn't going to give up. I took what, I took that God's hand and came here. I don't know why. What's happening to 
happening to happen going to happen to me, but I know that I'm still alive. I know that I need to become stronger. I need to push myself far beyond what I ever thought possible. I have to do I have to do this to get my justice. <laughs> that first step is always the hardest. I'm surprised to hear someone speak up from behind me. I go to move, but it's like I can't. It's like I'm frozen in place. Damn it. Move, body, move. Why am I stuck like this? I see the man walking out in front of me. <clears throat> from the corner of my eye. But I can't get a good look at him. I just stare at the ground in front of me. Forgive me for butting into your business. I just want you to know that you'll be okay. Even if it's scary right now, you'll get through this. I feel enraged at my helplessness. Is this some kind of joke? Are you another god toying with me? What do you know about me? What do you know about what I'm going through? I don't know anything about you, but I do know you're not from Remore. That wedding dress is a dead giveaway. The wind flows through my, the trees and bushes, through the loose strands of my hair. I was in a similar position once, so I felt I needed to say something. Remore has become my sanctuary. I'm sure it'll be the same for you. Good luck, beautiful maiden. May this be your refuge from Earth. Wait, are you from Earth? Who are you? First, first time I'm able to move, but it's like he vanished into thin air. There's no way a human could vanish like that, right? Am I losing my mind? Maybe I'm already having my mental breakdown. Then again, if that's if that was a god, then he'd probably vanish like Mars, Mars did. Regardless, I can't just stand here frozen. Mars told me to enter the city, so that's what I'm gonna do. With that thought, I enter my new norm. Mars wasn't kidding when he said that this world is different from Earth. The city looks like our medieval era. With that progress, with their progress in technology, oh please tell me they have indoor plumbing. I walk into the village and look around. The wind blows from my hair, and I smell the scent of lavender from an incense shop in this street. I can now walk down the main world, taking in the scenery. Everyone seems to stop what they're doing and stare. The crowd of people in a very way of me. Understandably so, considering the way I dra uh, dressed. I'm dressed. I quickly became the center of attention here in my, uh, in my white puffy dress. Even in this, in my world, I would be a sight to see, uh, see walking down the street. I wish Mars could have given me something different to wear, though he might have been planning to do so before he was got spurred away. Seriously, though, how could he have just, could, how could he just leave me like that? It's so irritating. The next time I see him, I'm going to give him my, uh, give him a tongue lashing that he deserves. I don't care if he's a god. I wonder how long he will he will be gone. Doesn't mortal life time differ from gods? What if I'm left alone for days or weeks? I have no way to care about uh, care for myself. Eh, the more I think about it, the angrier I become. All right, new plan. Don't depend on the flood boy god. Instead, plan on plan to work through it alone. Be a woman that your future self would be proud of. You got this. Mission number one, acquire funds. The first thing uh, thing of value that I have to be uh, have on me is my is this dress. My and my engagement ring. I look down at my left hand. The diamond sparkles a little too bright right now. When I first saved this one, it was a symbol of hope, happiness. Now it's a horrible reminder of the evil that hides in people's hearts. Still, I think it'll be the best to keep the ring until I get a better grasp of more of the watery system here. I sure a diamond ring would sell for considerably more than a dress. But I think it's. It, I, but looking at everyone's clothes, clothing, I assume the materials from my dress are quite rare. 
If I sell it, I, I may be able to get a decent amount. I look around for a store. The problem is, I don't know, know or understand the currency. I don't want to get scammed again for na naivety. I'm sure they will want to barter for the goods and try to get the best deal. Barter? Wait, what if they don't speak our, my language? Mars is a god. He's bound to understand our all languages, but other mortals? If the other guy said he was from Earth, he'd probably either a god or a fragment of my imagination. So I'm pretty sure I'm losing, my, I'm losing it. If I go up to them and start talking to them in a language that they don't understand, I would find myself in big trouble. But Mars told me to go to, to go to the city, didn't he? Or did he mean wait at the city's entrance? Oh crap. I scan the area around me. Everyone has kept a safe distance. I can't hear what they're saying either. It's all hushed, mumbled tones that meld together. Even the children who were once run running in the streets are now gathered near the adults. I get the I stand out, but it's, isn't this a ratchet a bit over the top for a, for a woman? I hear someone approaching from behind and turn in their direction. A man walks out of the alleyway. His gaze is on me. Uh, on me, I could feel it. In a predatory gaze, one I'm all too familiar with. Well, hello there, pretty thing. You don't look like you're from around here. Well, at least I know who that we could speak the same language. He may be annoying, but it answers my question. I'm a traveler. <laughs> Dressed like that. Is there something wrong with my attire? Most travelers don't want to stand out. When they have something to hide, I... Then they have something to hide. I don't. <laughs> well, if you don't have anything to hide, why don't I show you around? Not interested, but thanks. Oh, well, I turn to walk away, but another thug grabs my wrist. We weren't asking. Hey, don't be rough with her. Remember, she's much smaller than you are. Someone else? The original man walks closer to me and gives me a smile. I, I just go attack him all. I return with a glare. I return it with a glare. Come on, don't be like that. You're not from around here, right? You could find yourself in dangerous situations without a chaperone. Why not let me take that role? We'll get rid of this brute, and we'll have a nice date. Sound good? No, it doesn't. <laughs> so you want to stay with this guy? You got an interesting taste. The thug, who has his hands pulled, oh, a hand pulled me closer to it. The thug who had my hand pulls me closer to him. <sighs> she smells good. Okay, um, I'm going, um... For, um, Jason Voorhees on all of you. Of course, I run to the creep. I don't run into creeps like this. But after what I've been through, he's not the least bit scary. Yeah, I've seen scarier. <laughs> I'm the one that's. I'm the one that has um some knowing in slasher movies, right? <laughs> His motivations aren't exactly hidden here. Or <laughs> that in fact I only watched one slasher movie. <laughs> I turn my attention to the thug, who had me in his grasp. Excuse me, good sir, but get your hands off my wrist and your face out of my view. I don't have any intentions of responding to your advances. I'm on my own. I've been on my own for years. It taught me how to handle this stuff. Wow. There's not many women with your spirits. I am impressed. You got grit. Yeah, she does. I like a woman like this. The man, uh, the man's grip on me tines. I smell the alcohol and body odor emanating from him. I hate dealing with guys like this. I hate this reality. Well, my nose doesn't like you. I'm not even really sure that I'm saying what I'm saying right now. I'm tired of hurting to make uh, to think I married a man who's worse than this fuck to think I let him break me it's infuriating watch your mouth 
wash yours. <laughs> she told you, didn't she? You little. I always, I always rescue myself. I'm always have to rescue myself. I feel a strange pain where his grip is pinching me. Hey, Bin, relax. You're hurting her. She's making fun of me. You're disrespecting her. What do you think's gonna happen? I ain't gonna be disrespected by a bit. Ben. The man's grip tightens even more. Get your hands off. In an instant, I find myself pulled from his grasp. Causing trouble already, are you, G? Well, here's our our next, um... Um... Next, um... Bachelor... Um... Person? <laughs> White Knight, I was wondering when you'd come to the rescue. The man named Jin looks nonchalantly between me and the knight. Was this man hurting you, milady? I was just... Uh... Introducing myself to the girl. I was going to be a good citizen and show her around. Yeah, no. Oh, really? I don't think she appreciates your introduction or offer. I came on strong, that's all. I can be intimidating. I am a big man. Yeah, I'm so back off. You're not intimidating. I told you I'm not interested in what you're offering. Jen laughs at this. You heard the lady. No means no. Not keep trying. I finished the man's sentence. I appreciate him him helping me, but I never want to be a damsel in stress again. I need to warn from this moment. You heard her loud and clear. Get out of here. Don't bother this girl again. <laughs> Whatever. She's not worth the trouble anyways. Spinning in our direction, the thug walks back towards the alleyway. And G, get better control of your men, or you'll deal with me. That was entirely my fault. I apologize, milady. We're both a bit drunk, and he doesn't listen very well when he's had some spirits in him. Yeah, no kidding. It's no excuse, but I hope you'll forgive him. The man bows before walking away. We stand there, watching him disappear into the shadows before the knight stepped away from me. It's not good to stand out in this city, even during the day. I wasn't trying to. It's out of my control. My wrist throbs from where the thug was squeezing me. I find myself rubbing it unconsciously. Uh, unconsciously. Un Did he hurt you? Not really. It's nothing to worry over, Sir Knight. Call me Lance. Oh, Lance? Lance a lot? Well, then thank you, Sir Lance. <laughs> I just want to say call it Sir, Sir Lance a lot. Don't mean to be rude, but I need to get going. I haven't drawn enough attention to myself. May I ask where you're headed? I don't really want to tell him my plans, but he is a knight. If I'm going to... If I'm too sick to drive or act especially then I might find myself in jail so rather than an inn I want to find a place to sell this dress I need a place to spend the night preferably an inn I think you'll have a hard time finding any merchant who can afford that dress even stained as it is stained? Lance nods and motions to the side of my dress I look down and see blood smeared on it it must have been from when I was coughing and collapsing Crap, I thought that was only dirt on it. No wonder everyone's floating me. Your best bet would be to place it up for auction. Auction? They, they'll buy a dress in this condition? Auctions will sell anything if it's rare enough. Would the auction house loan me a set of clothes? This is the only thing I have. I'm sure they would. Even if they didn't, I can get you something to wear until your dress sells. He's being rather accommodating to a complete stranger. More than likely, he wants to keep tabs on me. I like to keep my distance, 
but I don't think I have a choice at the matter at the moment. Thank you. Then I'll take you up on that offer. The knight smiles and nods at his head at my answer. As long as I show, show that I'm compliant, he shouldn't have any reason to do something drastic. I just bide my time. I fall behind him as it, we make our way through the crowd. Lance takes me to the biggest building in the facility. Is this really the auction house? I was expecting something shadier, but it looks like it looks as it's run through legal channels. Well, I'm being escorted by a knight. Everyone eyes, uh, everyone's eyes are on me as we make our way into the building. There's no way this is an auction house. This place is filled with knights. Right through here. I make eye contact with a knight. There's a glint in them that they're daring to make me. F they're daring me to make it run for it. I enter a small room and hear the doors shut behind us. Is this an, an, an inter in interrogation room? Maybe I should have taken the chances with the drunk idiots. Probably would have been a better chance of escaping them. What's the meaning of this, Sir Lance? This is obviously is an auction house. Whose blood is on your dress? Of course he's questioning me about the blood. I feel like a moron right now. Lance casually places his hand on the hilt of his sword. The auction alone the action alone is even but casual though. Well, um, maybe oh, be nice, it's mine. I'm not getting out of it without answering. It's mine. That's a significant amount of blood. And you have no visible wounds. Oh, so just because you can't see my energy is it doesn't exist. Figures I'll end up castling it uh, could be cornered by a guy like you. I should have known better than trust you. Did you really think I wouldn't question you about the blood? Lance looks down at my dress in his scalpel eyes. Considering the quality of craftsmanship, you were not engaged to a commoner. You're really judging a book by its cover, you know? Look, that I'm not suggesting that you were the one to do harm. But it's apparent that you were in a dangerous situation that resulted in blood getting on your dress. So you need to trick me to ask about the situation? This is not something I could discuss on a street corner. Besides, I doubt you would have come willingly if you'd known where I was taking you. The knight takes a step forward and I stickily jump back. Don't come any closer. I don't know what you think I've done, and but I promise you that I'm innocent. He expects my wishes, but doesn't move his arm, his hand off his hilt of his sword. The blood is mine, just because you can't see an energy, an energy, doesn't mean there isn't one. Why? What happened to me affected only me. No one else was harmed. I was the only victim, and I survived. Uh, you're being too ambiguous. I'm telling you, this is none of your concern. I didn't ask, ask you to save me. I didn't go running to knights to defend me. I could take care of myself. No one else was harmed. What more do you want from want me to say? No matter how many times you ask this question, my answer isn't going to change. I want you to be straightforward with me. Even if you were the only one harmed, it's my duty as a knight to see to it that no one else becomes a victim. And if I tell you I'm a victim of a certain stance? What if I told you that I had an unexpected reaction to something I drank and it caused me to cough up blood? No one else was harmed, but I'm the victim. I'm a young woman of the, um, the tur- uh, Integrity. I have a very strong sense of justice, so I- So if there's- were anything that you could help do to help, I would have told you immediately. But I don't think it matters what I have to say. What I have to say to you, it seems you already reached your conclusion about me, Sir Knight. 
It's apparent that you don't even consider my inspiration as truth. So why should I even bother responding to you if you're just going to believe what you want? <laughs> Lady, uh, I... I didn't realize I got blood on my dress. Otherwise, I would have strolled... I won't have strolled through town. I was an idiot who drank something that I shouldn't have, and I paid the price. That's all the information you ha I want to share. Now please, let me be on my way. I'll go, I go with a walk past him, but he grabs my wrist. Let go of me. I grab his wrist with my other hand, and try to get myself free from his grasp. When I do this, I feel the warmth of his skin on my fingertips. In a moment. A, fla a bright flash of us. May your face forever entwine. Receive the blessing of Mars, God of Remor. <laughs> oh, he's one of the. Yep. I feel a burning sensation under my engagement ring. <sighs> your. My faded. As he says this, Mars boards enter my mind. You'll know the moment, the moment you touch them, if they're distant to you. And if that's what Mars was talking about, is Lance one of the people who can help me? What do you want mean, fated? What's happening? The blessing of Mars? Blessing of Mars? What do you, what are you talking about? And who are you? Are you the person that Mars wanted me to meet? What do you mean? Maybe I shouldn't imagine that anything? He hasn't believed me so far. I just need to get away from this, him before I find myself in more trouble. I'm nothing. I am... Um, where, where, what exactly is the blessing of Mars? You don't know about this? Should I know about it? He looks like... He looks like he wants to ask further questions, but he's strained himself. Everyone knows of Mars' blessing. Our world revolves around it to produce the most fitting heirs. <laughs> okay, that, that, that works. Heirs? Do you have any memories at all? Are you suffering from amnesia? No. I'm from a different world. I got easy god here. I don't want- I don't know- I don't want to talk about myself right now. But this is a- this is- What is this marking? And what does it relate to us? If we receive this marking, it means we are the most compatible. Compatible how? We're soulmates. I'm destined to be your husband. It's Mars's decree. This is something everyone waits for. Some their entire life. Soulmates? Emily break it away from his grasp. Lance nods his head. Much to my horror. Wait. Did Mars tell you, tell you, th you this himself? Uh, it's another thing that everyone knows. It's not something he has to specifically tell us. I'm very surprised that you're not aware of this. I feel completely panicked. No, I, I... What sort of trick, twisted joke is this? <laughs> okay, so... I know we have a lot more people, so we're just gonna have a whole bunch of people that are afraid to well, I'm not feeling well. I need to go. Uh, the lady. Whoa! Hey! Wait. The uh, lady. I turned to run to uh, run out of the building. By me, I'm met with by more my knights entering. Whoa! Hey! It's not good to rush like that. A woman grabbed my hold of my shoulders and attempt to calm me down. I'm sorry. I'm not feeling well. I just need to go home. Please, please let me go. All, my, all the emotions that were held back burst out of me like water from a broken dam. Hey, try to calm down. It's okay. You're surrounded by knights. Unless you're a criminal, this is the safest place to be. Even though she says this, I see a look of skepticism on her face. Please let me go. Lady! Lance comes running out of the room. The woman seems surprised. I don't hesitate to use the opportunity to break free from her grasp and run away. Ah, uh, wait! <sighs> oh, sorry, Shiri. Lance, is she a suspect? Uh, no, no, uh, she's my fated. I don't know why, but somehow I scared her. You're fated? Lance, what did you- 
I didn't hear the rest of the conversation as I escaped into the bustling city. I can't believe this is happening to me. I gotta get out of here. I gotta get away. In my haste, I end up crashing into someone. <clears throat> a bright flash of uh, light elopes on us as I feel his lips brush against my neck. May your faith forever entwine. Receive the blessing of Mars, god of remorse. <laughs> Another one. Yeah. <laughs> this is our next one. Next victim. Not again. I sit up and look down at the man. Blow me, and I'm taken back by his appearance. His eyes, how beautiful. He gives me a jealous smile, and I snap back to reality. I'm sorry, are you okay? I think I should be asking you that. You seem to be running from someone. <laughs> he's not phased, but by all... Uh, he's not phased by all this. Maybe? I'm just hearing things, right? I'm probably incautioning, but maybe it's some kind of repeat message? The man glances away from me for, from me for a moment, and I fall follow his line of sight. The night's approaching us. Damn it, I have to get out of here. Oh, he's just trying to- he's gonna try to pull me over uh, to him. Just when I was about- uh, I think the knight was about to grab me, he stops and takes a step back. What? Did he change his mind? I look over the man, who I'm lay, uh, laying on top of. He's still looking at- uh, he's still looking at the knight. It's the knight? Obey. Is the night obey? <laughs> Milady, wait! Laz's voice calls from the entrance of the night's barracks. I see him running down the steps. Crap. Sorry, I'm really sorry. I need to go. Oh, yep. Yeah. I try to get off the man, but he holds me close, sir. Wait. May I know your name? Is this guy serious right now? <laughs> Sorry, I, I kind of tied up in the moment. Maybe I'll wheel me again. The spot surprised him, and he lets go of me. I push myself off the handsome young man and continue running away. This is crazy. I'm being chased by a knight and, not, uh, and knocking people over. Mars keeps blessing me too. What the heck's going? What the heck's going on? Your Majesty, are you okay? You're not injured, are you? Oh, he's a keener or a prince. <laughs> no, but she appears to be in trouble. Emperor Eisen, he, your hand. Eisen. Oh, <laughs> kind of, that's her name that kind of reminds me of Bleach. Eisen looks down at his wrist and sees a small design peeking out from his. A butchered up glove. Ah, so that's where it appeared. Y you were fated to a stranger? Do you know what this could mean? <laughs> he ignores his uh, charge. Uh, he ignores his charge and he pauses his glove to hide the mark. Repositions his gloves to hide, his, the, hide the mark. What are the odds that I would meet my future wife in this way? <laughs> 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 now then, Roz, um, sir, sir, uh, I'm also destined to tonight. <laughs> it's quite entertaining. This is not the time to be amused, your majesty. What if she's a commoner? Do you know the repercussions that will await her if it's... Dang, destined, he do I probably doesn't care. You don't need to remind me, Ray. I'm well aware of the seriousness of this matter. For now, follow her. It seems she's captured the attention of our White Knight. If she's in danger, protect her as you would me. These are your orders. Uh, yes, your majesty. I continue my sprint for the streets. The ways of people keep parting, causing me to stand over, out even more. What? If I don't hurry, I'm going to get caught. I don't want to be caught. No, I can't be trapped again. I won't be tricked again. I feel like I can hear Ryan's laughter. I can hear the echoes of him mockingly calling me my wife. Why would Mars put 
put me in this situation. Soulmate, Faded, what ridiculous nonsense. I'll never fall for that again. I can't stay in this world. I can't go for that again. I can't deal with this. Someone, please, someone, help me, please. Lady, please, I, I just want to speak with you. Leave me alone. We have nothing to talk about. He seems to falter when I say this. Then, will you please allow me to escort you to a safer area? This place is dangerous. You think I'm going to trust you again after you, what you did? I admit what I did was wrong. I, I apologize for deceiving you, but this area is filled with scoundrels. It's not safe. Milady, I, I don't want you getting hurt. I continue running, but my heels catch on my dress again. I barely manage to keep myself from falling. He's going to catch up with me at this rate. Silly. Someone's- uh, someone I hear! <gasps> Yay! You! <laughs> One person I recognize! <laughs> Before I get uh, pause what I heard, a strong hand pull me into the alley. I finally found you. He holds me tight. His tired body is trembling. Calvert, what, what are you doing here? How, how are you? <gasps> Milady! The sound of the knight's voice is getting much closer. It's much more panicked, too. Lance goes to unsleeve his sword as he nears the alley. Unhand her at. He's my friend. I stand pr protectively in front of Calver and glare at the knight. He seems dumbfounded by the situation. Friend? Calver places his hand on my shoulders before he moves in front of me. Yes, I'm her friend. Now what business do you have with her? The lady is my fated. I wish to speak with her, but frightened her in the process. This area where she is running is dangerous. Lance tries to get a, get a glance at me, but Calver positions himself directly in front of my body. I'm hit with so many different motions. When he does, uh, when he does this. So, in other words, this man is giving you trouble, Sally. I merely wanted to escort her to a safer location. They continue to talk, but I find that I can't concentrate on what they're saying. Great, I'm dislocating again. Dislocating again. How is Calver even in this world? And why is he going so far to protect me? I find myself holding onto the back of his coat. His bowed a, bo a broad back gives me a sense of security, but I know I can't feel uh, feel that way. We used to be inseparable. Maybe that's why I can't stop myself. I need to stop myself, though I can't trust him not again. I think this, th but my head leans against his back. Silly. I'm going to be sick. It's too much. Despite everything that's happened between us, I find myself holding tightly in his jacket, to his jacket. It's something I did when, with my brother, and I can't stop myself right now. Silly. I can't... I just need a moment to... My knees collapse beneath me, and I find myself on the ground. Hey! Kevin reaches out and tries to catch me, but I place my hands out to stop him. I don't want to be touched right now, please. Just give me a bit of space, just for a moment, please. Calver respects that, respects that, and takes a sm small step back. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to overwhelm you. It's obvious that you've been through something traumatic. My fingers dig into the car uh, uh, cobblestone wa uh, walkway beneath me. Traumatic is an understatement. I. I let my emotions get the best of me. Lance goes to move closer, but Calver gets offensive. Don't take another step. Sully, can you get up? I fight to calm my breathing, but I find the verge of, um, I feel on the verge of a panic attack. My fingertips chip at the fight, uh, uh, to as fight 
as I fight to regain control of my body. This is... This is all too much. Calvert, I don't know if I could handle all this. Calvert knees down in front of me. He, he meets my gaze. His expression is one that I haven't seen in year, for years. It's okay. I'm here. I'm right here. This is not fair. You can't look at me like that right now. Please don't remind me of who you used to be. I'm too weak right now. Calver, how, how are you here? My friend reaches out his hand, but draws it back at the last second. I must lurch forward, lunch forward, to stop him from dis, dis, dissing himself. No, it's not, it, no, it's, it's okay. You said you didn't want to be touched. I changed my mind. Kevin's face lines up, lines up slightly, and he gives me a gentle glaze. The next moment, he closes the distance between us. It takes all the willpower I have to not to jump into his arms. His warm, his warm hand cuts my cheek so tenderly. May your fates forever entwine. Receive the blessing of Maris, God of Remor. <laughs> okay, we, we got our third, and he is our childhood friend. Our brother's childhood friend, more so perceived. It's, he's fed to me, too. That's pretty ironic. How are you here, Calver? The tattoo begins to appear in the side of his neck. <sighs> That's simple. I promised you that I'd always be there for you. Crossing worlds is just part of that promise. I don't say, don't say that nonchalantly. I'm completely shaken by all this. How are you so calm? <laughs> he got easy kind. It's like, thought uh, my friend's getting easy kind. I'm gonna easy kind myself. Because yeah. you're alive. You're looking at me and speaking to me. There's nothing I wouldn't do to keep you safe, Sally. Caver seems. Like he's about to break down crying. I could see I could see his eyes are wet with tears. Seeing him being emotional is making me feel like the weight of my own emotions. I can't handle that right now. It's okay, however. So uh, so don't give me that look. You were at death's door before Maris brought you here. I, I thought I was about to lose you for good. I this is too much. I can't take this. I always consider myself a strong woman, but right now, I just feel like a helpless child. I hate it. I hate this. I love the artwork for this game. Wait, what do you mean, Morris brought you here? And how are you fated to him as well? This is... well... it's impossible. Well, welcome to a Tomala, a Tomala game. Cover turns his attention back to the night. I get choices. <laughs> it looks like he's about to spawn when we hear the sound of someone's approaching. You're on the wrong side of town, Sir White Knight. I'm surprised you'd come here without backup. I think he has backup now. <laughs> the same, ma uh, same man from earlier walks out of the shadows. You're not looking to cause trouble, are you? When he hears this, Calvert gives me a look that tells me to stay near him. Then he stands and faces the man. No, not as long as I get what I want. You're not really in a position to bargain. Multiple unsavory looking men seem to crawl out of the shadows. Can't girl catch a break? No. I force my legs to stand up and look around. At all the men. We're surrounded. You don't want to do this right now. Go back to your master. There's a sharpness in his tone to, as he says this. I'm right here. Jin stops out of the shadows. Call off your men, G. A G. I don't know. This is pretty entertaining. It's not often that you get this look in your eye, White Knight. Lance draws his sword and Calvert stands protectively in front of me. I look around to try to find the nearest object that could be used as a weapon. I'll, I'll use the, I'll use the, um, whatever you call this, 
smack him with it. I'm not going to be a, a hindrance in the battle. I need to find something to defend myself with. There's not really anything around here, though. I feel G's gaze on me, and I glare up at him. Go screw a cactus, pervert. <laughs> we don't want any issues. And you won't get any. As long as you give me the girl. Nah. This has got a death wish. You talk big for someone without a weapon. Uh, I think he has a weapon. Don't need one. Oh. Huh. Tough guy, huh? You got me curious now. As they are closing in, another person steps from the shadows. His clothes resemble a priest, and he has what I assume is a holy book in his hand. In the name of our father, Morris, I offer you grace and a pardon. Leave this vicinity within the next 20 seconds, or suffer the wrath of God. Go preach your sermon somewhere else, senor. We're conducting important negotiations right now. 12, 11, 10, 9, 8. As a man begins counting down, he takes out what seems to be a chain from his cloak. Seven, six, five, four, three, two. This man pulls out a weapon and begins walking towards us. One. In an instant, the priest flings a chain and the sharp blade flings in an arch, slicing the necks of three of the men. What kind of weapon is that? Lance begins taking down our attackers with ease. One after another, they fall, and I've noticed that he's not actually killing them. Is he showing them mercy? The red-haired guy on their hand is showing no mercy, and he's a priest. Good. <laughs> I think he got, got that from Naruto. <laughs> He's slicing them down with almost boredom. The world around me is filled with battle cries and agonizing screams. How is, how is this even real? I think they need to swap their um, their roles because the white knight is not killing and the priest is killing. Come on, let's get out of here. It looks like these two can handle them just fine. It looks like... I like to see the most of the men are either incapacitated or bleeding out of the ground on the ground. Right, we should take the chance to escape. I need to agree. I not in agreement as Calver takes my hand. However, before we can do do so much as move, another group of thugs comes rushing into the alleyway. You aren't going anywhere. The man lunges at Calver, who pushes me to the side. I fall to the ground and turn to see him standing, uh, stranding against the blade, wielding an opponent. Calver. I'm fine. Stay back. Oh, he has a gun. <laughs> well, don't, don't worry. Um, what's funny? Um, I don't have a weapon. He has a weapon right there. <laughs> I go to stand up when I feel that like my heel is caught in something. I glance down to see my dress was torn from the fall. Here's my weapon. Without hesitation, I reach down and grab, uh, 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 grab the gaping hole of my dress. I pull, uh, as, pull it as quickly as I can, causing a long, narrow strain, uh, strain of my dress to tear off. Time to strangle this creep. <laughs> um, how about I just use my heel? Stab him the eye. <laughs> I glance, uh, I place all the energy into my legs and jump off the, up to attack the men. Unfortunately, I don't get a chance to get him. I, pull, I was pulled be from behind, away from my friend. Let go of me! I twist my body around to prepare to punch the person when I get literally swept off my feet. Sorry, but we need to get you out of here. <laughs> His hand 
May your faiths forever entwine. Receive the blessing of Mars, God of Remor. Now I'm fair to the priest. <laughs> didn't expect that. I also didn't expect you to be bare. These undergarments are very revealing. My blush flows from even deeper. Well, I didn't expect a man of Mars to have his hands in my dress. Yeah. This is a shocking event for both of us. Bear with it for now. Wait. The man turns around and begins running away. I grip. Oh, I tie my grip around his neck and get to keep from falling. Silly! <gasps> Milady! What the hell is going on? <laughs> <I'm> like, <I'm... laughs> Wait, what do you think you're doing? Saving you. I didn't need to. I'm all for independent women, but there's a difference between stubbornness and stupidity. You need to learn it. Yeah, um... Excuse me? Excuse me? Does the truth offend you? Does the truth of Excuse me? Does the truth offend you? This guy... This guy... Takes us down an empty alleyway. Trying to tackle a blade-wielding opponent twice your size wouldn't end well. I wasn't going to attack him. I was going to strangle him. I'm not stupid enough to fight fairly with that oversized brute. The man smirks and seems pleased with that answer. He opens his mouth to respond. What a... What was that a... The priest sets me down. And turns back towards where we were we left. However, he doesn't let go of my wrist. Calver's standing there with his with a gun in his hand. He's producing a weird black mist. What the heck is that thing? Uh, what the heck is that? That's my only warning. Let her go. The priest released my hand before placing his in the air. I'm assuming that little weapon of yours is from your world. Our world? How does he know we're from a different world? Then again, he's a priest, so maybe Morris told him? Morris it's told him? It's quite effective. In the right hands it is. I'm curious how well we can stand up to a blessed weapon. The priest takes a step forward and Calvert crocks his gun in response. I don't... I don't like where this is going, but Calvert is strong fire. But this guy is unlike anything I've seen before. Wait. I try I try to I go to try to grab the priest when Stand down by Imperial Command. Stand down by Imperial Command. <laughs> Everyone freezes when they hear a commanding voice from the alleyway's entrance. Sorry. And their man comes out from behind him. Is this man? Is this the man I bumped into in the street? Who the hell are you? Calver now has his gun pointed between all three of them. Just as he about the, he says this, a blade touches the back of his neck. Who are you to point a weapon at our emperor? In number he's from my world. Emperor. This guy is, is the Emperor. Oh crap. Wait, Sir Lance? I purchased myself in the middle of everyone and see Calvert stiffened. Yeah, I know you don't like this, but I'm not going to let you get her. Please, just. If this is all being really out of hand, I turn my attention back to Calvert. Calvert, load your gun. You know you're scared. You're scared for both of us, but the gun is really making the situation worse. Calvert's has hesitant for a second, but I keep eye contact with him. Calver, please. We uh, re- Quintly, he lowers his weapon. 
I'm going to need you to drop your weapon, not just lower it. Without breaking eye contact with me, Calvert lets go of his weapon. Instead of hitting the ground, it seems like it just vanished altogether. No one seems to know so. Pretty much, uh, yeah, pretty much I, pr uh, yeah, pretty sure I'm having a mental breakdown right now. This has to be it. White Knight, <laughs> you should be aware of what needs to be done. <laughs> He's just trying to protect me. What needs to be done? I have really had a bad, I really have a bad feeling about this. Hold on, my friend was just trying to protect me. He's being compliant. I rush in front of the guard and the emperor and bow my head. If anything, I should be the one punished. I hit the emperor and knocked him over. Hit? Didn't I just warn you about stubbornness and stupidity? I bite my tongue before I say anything I might regret. Being honest and transparent isn't stupid, especially in, a situation, in this situation. I figured that a priest, of all people, would understand the settlement. I return my attention to the Emperor. I apologize for disrespecting you, you, your majesty, your friend, my friend, and I were unaware of your identity. I bow deeply to the man. Please, have mercy on him. He's only looking out for me. I hear footsteps approaching and tried my best to calm my nerves. Lift your head. I don't like seeing you bow to me. I do as he says and look up at the Emperor. It seems there are extenuating circumstances regarding this matter. I will trust and believe this man was acting in your best interest. The Emperor turns his attention towards the priest his face looking slightly sterner. Senior Ezra, I apologize for using an Imperial Order against you, but we cannot have a blessed weapon being used here. There is no need to apologize, Your Majesty. I let my curiosity get the better of me. Sir Lance, sheath your sword. Yes, Your Majesty. Dipper nods his head before his attention is once again on me. Allow me to formally introduce myself. My name is Aizen. I'm the Emperor of Jeril. I'm Celesta. The Celestia. Celeste. I'm Celeste. <laughs> I fight back and our bow before returning my attention to Lance. We couldn't avoid all of this drama if I hadn't run from you, Sir Lance. I apologize. <laughs> There's no need for that. It's understandable that you would run after everything that happened. Lance and the Carver, both waste no time in moving to my side. As soon as I, as soon as he gets closer to me, my aunt kneels down and bows his head lower towards the Emperor. Emperor Aizen, I believe I also owe you an apology. My fate had touched you, even if it was through your clothes. I thank you for showing her mercy. You are fated. Uh, yeah, about that. Everyone here is fainted to me. What? Yes, we've received the blessing of Morris, though it seems that she is not aware of what the blessing is. It frightened her considerably, which is why she was running. You're leaving an important detail, Sir Knight. But I also tricked her into coming to the Knight's headquarters to question her. You've been missing all morning, and we were all concerned. The Emperor turns his attention to me. I see that my desire for a stroll caused you considerable trouble. Everyone's eyes widen at his statement. It's evident that an apology from the Emperor is a rare occurrence. <laughs> so like they thought he thought I killed him. <laughs> and I, I was fated. He found I was fated. And then I ran into him and he's <laughs> There's no need to apologize, Your Majesty. There's no way of knowing that this would happen. He gives me an indescribable smile and returns his attention to Lance. I'm rather curious, White Knight. How are you fated to Celeste? It surprised me too, but I assure you that I've received the marking. I can't show you it right now, but if you look on her finger, you'll see the design. Fascinating. It seems we are in quite a predicament, as I have also received the marking. 
<laughs> and um, Calver, who we I've known for all my time, has slaved it too, and so has the Emperor himself. I, 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 Elza places his hand as chest and Calver rubs his neck where his marking appeared. Each one of you is fated to this one woman? Your Majesty! This. <laughs> the guard trails off and looks at me. Are you a goddess of some kind? A goddess? What kind of question is that? Mars suddenly appears before us. The shock caused Lance and Ryan to draw their weapons. Uh, I hate paperwork. Oh, sorry about that, Celeste. I kind of left you in a bit of a difficult situation. Yeah, kind of. <laughs> and he touches me, and, and, I, and he's uh, and he's faded too. D difficult is an understatement. I quickly cl close the distance between myself and the god. Do you even know what I've been through since you disappeared? Apparently, I'm fated to all these men, and I'm supposed to marry them. Explain this, Mars. Mars takes the opportunity to look around. Takes the moment to look around. Good, you found most of them. Most of them? We are humble to be graced by your presence, God of Remor. <laughs> also, merely bows low to the ground, and Lance and Ryan, Ryan follow suit. I also offer... Uh, uh, <laughs> I also offers a formal bow, and Carver and I remain standing. Oh, bless their hearts, they're back. <laughs> now, now, I'm not that kind of god. I don't do all the groveling and holy talk. Ugh, it's suffocating. <laughs> Just be normal! Everyone who's, was bowing strings, but remains stiff and reserved. So, I bet all of you have many questions. I've got the answers. Well, some of them anyways. But, before we start with the Q&A, we need to find a better place to talk. And meet the Last Fated. The Last Fated? <laughs> I'll explain in a bit. So, whose house should we go to? Everyone stands, Arkway. Silence, uh, an awkward silence for a moment before the Emperor steps forward. I suggest we go to Mavril Castle. Mavril Castle? Are you certain that you want us to go to a place deemed your sanctuary? This is a matter that must be handled delicately. We should have adequate privacy there. From the de uh, de uh, from their demeanor, it seems that Mavril Castle is a place that is not easily accessible, even for the leap. I wonder if I should just the forest area where Mars met first. <laughs> Don't have to ask me twice. <laughs> Grab your swords and steady your stomachs! Oh no. In an instant, I find myself face down on a cold marble floor. The men lay out ground, which are comp uh, accompanied by the surprise glass of the, uh, and yell of mates. My vision pours around me as I try to focus my eyes. We land in what appears to be a grand hall, and all of us except Mars are feeling the effects of his decision. Did... did they just appear out of nowhere? One of, ma uh, one of the maids looks down at the ch uh, child servant. Go and get the guards! Run now! Quickly! The little one, uh, the little one nods and rushes out to the room. Mars looks around. Gratefully, and shoot, uh, shoots one of the maids his best smile. No need to be alarmed. Everything is under... Not another move. Okay, I'm pretty sure this is our next faded. Suddenly out of nowhere, a blade slices, uh, slides in front of Mars's neck. Control! Are you alright, your majesty? What did you do to our emperor? Before Aizen can say anything, his knight slams through the door and surrounds us. Their blades pulling at our backs. Well, that was fast. The nonchalant god smiles wearily in the, the precocious situation as there was nothing wrong. His temperament makes some of the knights shuffle uncomfortably. Stand down. After a moment, Aizen manages his manages to voice those words. He sounds like he could barely talk, which doesn't help 
our situation in the slightest. He sounds like he could barely talk, which doesn't help in the situation in the slightest. The guard pauses, but do not or the sword pulling at our bodies, mine included. I force my head to turn his uh, uh, eyes and stretching, and I see his eyes staring into mine. His gla uh, graze is fierce. Is he upset? I guess I can't blame him. I'll be upset too if the, in this situation. The grunt. Eisen forces his body up, upright. His force is slowly on the knight besides me. Get your blade away from her. The knight that has me pinned takes a step back. He seems shocked. What is the meaning of this chimera? Oh. Uh, your man. But we're go uh, goes to say something, but is stopped mid midway. Everyone, out of the room. Our seamen and I will handle this. Some of the soldiers try to argue. The butler's having none of it. No. The butler's tone seems leaves no room for discussion. And at his order, everyone sh uh, shiftly leaves. Only the sound of hurried footsteps fill the room as he waits for the door to shut. After a few seconds of silence, the butler turns his eyes and- Your Majesty, are you injured? I'm well. There's no cause for concern. And I do not appear to be well, Your Majesty. Yet I am. Remove your sword, Hussein. You do not know who you have at your blade. As the guard obeys his order, the butler does not over the, uh, the, uh, goes over to the drawer and takes out what appears to be a headdress of some kind. It's a weird feeling to be trapped on the floor while others walk around as if you were not there. I guess that's the difference between the social classes. Even here in Ramon, it's unavoidable. Forgive me for my negligence. I merely wish to escape for a short time. That was not negligence on your part. Escape? Or did you go to the city in this attire? <laughs> Might I ask why you deemed it appropriate to leave your chambers in such apparel? No one knows who I am. That's worse. Your Majesty, they will not be mindful in their actions around you. Now, now, old man. Let's not give our Emperor a hard time. That voice sounds familiar for some reason. I look over to the masked man, slutters up to the, the group. He definitely is a sight to behold. Was he wear why is he wearing a mask? Now is not the time for your ramblings, Anor. Is it not? As an advisor, I feel it's my duty to intervene when you're becoming too pompous and naggy. Naggy? <laughs> I'm glad uh, you've returned safely, your majesty. I too am relieved, but what would have happened had you touched a person of common blood? Let's discuss this in private at a later time. Forgive me, I meant no disrespect. After a comment, the man turns his attention to us. Nonetheless, the fact that these commoners have seen your face and are now aware of your identity you will leave them be. Leave them be? But my leash, the law states. This will be an exception. <laughs> no harm is to come to them at any point in time. They are my welcomed guests and as such should be treated with respect. You heard him, old man. They're his guests. Keep your bloodlust to a minimum, okay? You're welcome to guests. I have never seen these people before in my life. <laughs> well, oh, he just said that they're welcome guests, so shove it. Don't tell me you've left the palace on more than one occasion. You act surprised by this. Are you really the only one who didn't know this? Not now, Keith. Not now, Keith. And he says this. Aizen slowly makes his way towards me. 
in his full body, uh, I see his full body come into view when he kneels down beside me. Are you okay, my lady? Yes, the pain's starting to go away. Deppert reaches his hand out to me, but... Your Majesty. Your Majesty. <sighs> he stops mere ceremonies for me. The room is extremely tense. Well, this feels like an instant death situation. I glance over to uh, Kevin, glaring daggers at me, and the other guy, looking horrified. Yes, definitely death fog. <laughs> just, just made me think of um my next life as a villainess. How do I keep getting into into these messy situations like this? I'm, I just want to get revenge and then live a moderately peaceful existence. Considering this whole fated situation, I should probably just keep my distance for now. Thank you, Mashi, but I'll be okay. I slowly begin pushing my body up and away from him. Teleporting doesn't hurt nearly as bad as the first time, but it still isn't what I call fun. Not only have you shown your face to a woman, but you go so far as to nearly touch her. Uh, nearly um, actually did touch me. Your Majesty, don't tell me. Is she... You speak too freely, Keith. The butler remains quiet, but begins approaching us. Well, me, specifically. Before he could get close to me, Calver moves in front of the man. It's, only, it's okay, Calver. I glance a gently rise to my feet and look down at my dress. It's completely tattered. Is that a wedding dress? Before anyone gets blind, Mars cuts in. I have to say, I'm impressed with you, Aizen. This causes the butler's attention to whirl around to Mars. How dare you call the Emperor by his given name? Just who do you think you... That's enough. Your Majesty, I have tolerated many instances of disrespect since your arrival, but... The person before us is Lord Morris himself. <laughs> so I just got a call from a spam number, so yeah, I had to stop real quick. Kevin doesn't seem surprised to worry about the disinformation. I took you for a more delicate mortal, but your mental strength is top-notch, Emperor Aizen. Morris likes it, likes it, um, Kevin, and... The man crutches his jaw. He looks ticked off. All of the other men are still struggling to move, let alone stand. <laughs> I look around and see uh, as he says this. It's true. Ren looks like he's about to get sick, but in his stomach, Lance is usually still, and Elsa's entire body is shaking as he struggles to push himself up. The only person who... The only people who are standing are Calvin and the Emperor. Cal the effect should wear off by the end of the day. Ah, <coughs> uh, uh, end of the day? <laughs> Eisen and Mars ignore the men's response as Eisen continues uh, their previous conversation. I'm honored by your compliment, Lord Morris. If I may, though, I would have preferred to travel by foot. It wasn't that long of a distance, and this unnecessary manner of travel caused a needless commotion throughout my castle. I have my reasons. I've got a hothead that's going to be storming in here, and I don't want your guys getting involved, or your soldiers getting killed. If that is the case, was it necessary to bring that individual here? Yes, it was. And why was that? Just he says this, a loud crash revelates around the room. <laughs> oh, here's our head. It's a fox demon in his hand, his shoulder. A man crashes through the window with a small fox alongside him. Esmond and uh, Cavern both jump in front of the emperor. Where are those underworld dogs? You, you. Imbecile, do you even know the masterpiece that you just shot in? <sighs> Always so dramatic. 
Mirrors not uh, Mars nonchalantly waves his hand, and the broken mosaic magically appears itself. Pairs itself. The act leaves everyone speechless. Did you really have to break the glass? You sent out an emergency signal. Breaking the glass is the least of my concerns. <laughs> well, if I hadn't, then you would have taken your sweet time getting here. I don't have long before sun tracks me away again. For the first time, the man lowers his guard and looks around. He stares a man sprouts on the floor. Teleportation sickness? Yep. Completely ignoring the other individuals in the room, he turns his attention to the god. What's going on, Morris? I've got a job for you. A job? Morris walks over to me and gives uh, ways for the, for the young man to join us. He hesitantly approaches. Celeste, meet Shiro. Shiro, Celeste. In her world, it's customary to shake hands when introducing yourself. Her world? Mars ignores his question. Go on, shake her hand. He looks spectacle, and I already uh, skeptical, and I already have a general idea of on where this is going. Mars, let's cut to the chase. Is he in the? Before I can say anything more, the god grabs Shino's hand. Is something burning? It smells like smoke. Mars grabs our hands and forces us to touch. I'm surprised to feel the warmth of the skin on my palm and when I realize that Shan's glove is damaged. The moment that our skin touches, the same blessing responds throughout the building. <sighs> Shan's uh, rounds on Mars, but the god is not disturbed in the least. What's the meaning of this, Morris? Did you bring me here to play matchmaker? <laughs> you know I have no desire to get married. None. Never. Oh, someone with common sense. Too bad this it's a hothead with no fi filter. Yeah, neither does she. Both of you actually have quite a bit in common, which is why I need your help with her. You want me to be a babysitter? Babysitter? I'm an elite demon hunter, not a nanny. It's not forever. Just bear with being a baby. I have been bodyguard for half a year. Uh, half a year? Do you not realize how many demons are entering our realm as we speak? I don't have time to be babysitting a mortal! She turns his leave, all the while cursing the god. She's a demon magnet. At this, at this he stops. You won't have to chase them. They'll come to you. They'll come to all of you. Wanting her. The room is silent as Mars, the manor, completely changes. Great. Now I'm a demon magnet on top of everything else. This day is just getting be uh, better and better. After Mars' profound revelation about me being some sort of demon magnet, he suggests we all break away for a, a bit of rest. Before anyone could object, he disappeared as quickly as he arrived. Answers will come in the morning, apparently. If he ever even remembers that he agreed to talk with us, I doubtful. I release my bill of sigh as I look around my be new bedroom. Hopefully Rowley will be joining me in the morning. And I realize this is all just a nightmare. I know it's not, I know it's not, though I'm stuck in, the, uh, stuck in this nightmare. So I might as well make the most of it. I make my room, um, way to the bathroom. How fancy. I guess this is a castle, after all. Thankfully, it looks like this world has its own version of indoor plumbing. Such a... As much to my relief. I stroke the fire that connects to, uh, connects to the water pipes and turn to the faucet. I guess the main star, uh, started it before I came in the room. I'm glad. I have no clue how to start a light of fire. Hot steam is rising from the tub, and it fills with water. Milady, I'm here to assist you with your bath. I think I can manage on my own, but thank you. When I when we were getting my room arranged and set up, I told the Emperor that I don't want anyone to help me. 
The woman looks at me with a complex expression. It's obvious that she's under strict orders to stay beside me. She just is trying to help uh, do her job, snapping at her while it's off anything. Does the Emperor send you here? The Emperor wouldn't deign to speak to someone as lowly as me. If the Emperor himself didn't send you, who did? Sir Keeve informed me that you are to be treated with the utmost respect as per his sovereign's orders. I've merely come to assist you. As I guess the Emperor failed to mention my desire to the butler, that or he's ignoring my request in order to help uh, in order to keep tabs on me. Either way, I don't like it. Her body language is closed off and secretive. It's obvious that she has other orders. I don't like uh, feel comfortable with someone who's not completely transparent. I'm so sorry I'm late. The adorable girl, girl the adorable girl who looks to be a few years, years younger than me, burst into the room with a slew of bath products nearly uh, toppled over her hands. Did I make it inside? Oh, milady! I was trying to make it back before you started your bath. Just as she says this, her hair begins to pop up like a, scar a starred kitten. Compose yourself at once, child! <laughs> I can't help but stra- uh, I can't keep a s straight face when I see her ratchets. Uh, I'm sorry for showing you such a horrid appearance! She pats the, st uh, the stray hair down, but it quickly pops back up. She's so cute! What's your name? Oh, I'm Emmeline, but you can just call me Emmy, milady. She looks sweet enough, and the best thing about her is that she is transparent. Emily, would you like to assist me? Would that be okay? Milady, this child is still learning. I fear that she may not be able to serve you adequately. Bathing myself isn't rocket science. And by the way, that one's echoing. The maid gives me an insquitted look. What I mean is that it's not difficult to watch myself. I was planning on bathing alone anyways. Ah, uh, milady, the bath water is about to overflow. Emily quickly drops her supplies on the side table and turns off the faucet. As she does this, I turn my attention to my to the maid. She seems more like uh, more than competent to me. Rather than wasting some time while. Uh, watching a grown man woman bathe herself, why don't you continue with your other duties? Mr. Kevin is adamant about someone being with me. Then I choose Emily to help me. But made a silence for a moment. Very well. If that is what you wish. Emmeline, be sure that you treat our guest with the utmost respect. Yeah, she's echoing. Of course. I will do my best. The girl gives me a big smile, though it seems a bit strange. She's not good at hiding her emotions. Have a good bath, my lady. Yes, thank you. The maid quickly leaves. I'm honored that an esteemed guest of the Emperor has chosen me. I'll do my best to assist you in any way possible. You don't have to do that. I'm not picky. I just want a simple bath to for tonight. And I'm sorry if my request put you in a, different, a difficult situation. Not at all! I'm usually delegated to minor duties, but I'm quite excited to make a relaxing bath for you, milady. Creating tonics is a specialty of mine. It's why I was so late. Couldn't decide which one I'd use, so I brought them all. Emily cheerfully picks up two bottles and shows them, uh, shows them to me. Oh, and I also brought some rose petals. They release such a pleasant aroma when placed in the water. She whiffs a cover and some bright red petals fall onto the basket and onto the floor. The sight of them makes me recoil. <laughs> I appreciate the gesture, but I'm not really in the mood for any type of tonics for to for or anything like that. I just just want something simple. A bar of soap and a rag will be great. And he looks at me, then my dress. She quickly places the blanket back over the flowers and filters for many of her supplies. The Emperor prefers oils and tonics to soap, so we don't have any on hand at the moment. I couldn't possibly let you use what servants use, so please, understand. I wa watch as she takes one of the balls and empties the substance amount into her hand. She practically slaps her cheek, then fairly rubs the liquor 
a liquid all over her face. I made this tonic myself, so I can guarantee that it's safe. It makes your skin feel super smooth and the scent's not overwhelming. I also guarantee this tonic will make your skin so vibrant, milady. You should notice the wonderful effects that it has on my skin within a few moments. If you'd like, we could wait and have some tea before the bath. Would that make you feel more at ease? She's pretty quick to notice my hesitation. It seems like she wants to make it clear that the talks are safe to use. It's okay, thank you. You don't, ha uh, don't need to do anything more. I'll use the talk you made. Great. Now, please allow me to help you undress. She rushes behind me and begins to untie my corset. I hadn't even thought about how I was going to get this off, this brown off, ground off, ground, uh, gown off. I would have probably had to call for help regardless. The dress falls to the ground and almost instantly, a towel is wrapped around my body. The water temperature should be perfect. Let's get you washed up. The warmth smooths my aging body. Almost instantly, the calming smell of lavender fills the air, followed by the slightest hint of rose oil. I feel the refreshing mixture of warmth and the oils coat my body. It's heavily on my still aching joints. If it is okay, I will begin washing you, milady. Ah, oh, you don't have to do that. I can wash myself. Wash my body myself. Then, may I wash your hair? I've never washed with oils before. It's definitely probably be the best for her to help. Yes, that'll be great. Thank you. Then he beams at me and begins to wash my hair. You have such beautiful hair, milady. I've never seen such a pure white before. Thank you. That's sweet. Talkative maid entertains me with so many topics while she helps wash me. And I notice how every subject is selective and careful. Before long, she finishes be helping me and leaves me in the bath to the re uh, bathe the rest. I sit in the water, enjoy the waxing atmosphere. Sadly, my m mind will not allow me to rest, uh, truly rest. This day has been way too much for me. I sit underneath the water and let it raise, uh, raise my hair. The water's warmth smooths my face. The thoughts are, my thoughts are in shambles. I'm a woman who fell in love with love and nearly married the murder of her own family. I'm a demon magnet. I'm broken. It feels like I'm just a monster. Why was Gaia, Gaia so desperate for me to give her, uh, give her my soul? Why didn't Mars intervene? The never-ending barrage of questions rotates through my mind until I feel like the war itself is going to drown me. I ref uh, surface and take in a big breath of air. What will, what will be, will be. For now, I just need to do what I feel is right. I allow, uh, get out of the water and begin drying myself off. Uh, Milady, I could have helped you. The w young woman, oh, w young maid comes running up to me and I give her a gentle smile. It's okay, two arms, two legs, I could dry myself off. Ellen gives me a big smile before handing me what I assume are undergarments. While you were bathing, the Emperor sent you a variety of clothes to choose from. Of course, this isn't something that will be discussed beyond these chambers, milady. She places her finger on her lips and gives an her bright smile. I fall Emily out to the bathroom into the bedroom. My gaze lands on the outfits that are neatly arranged on the bed. They're all pretty, but right now, I just need to be practical. I pick one that offers me the most veracity. I don't want to stand out, and I don't think this will would be the best option. I, so I think this will be the best option. You will look lovely in whatever you choose, but that one does seem to be the most comfortable. You look so beautiful! It's like these clothes were made for you!
much of my shock, and only if it's a little girl appears. Oh my goodness, can I help? Uh, I came to help. Hey, sweetie, are you alright? Are you okay? What are you doing all the way out in here? I walk over to the little girl and bend down. Her skin is pale, and she's so skinny. How long have, has she been out, uh, been out here? Where are your parents? What? Her gaze meets mine, and a sinking feeling weighs in my stomach. Her eyes glaze, and she looks like a doll. Something's not right. Celeste Maiden? Get back! I pulled away from the little girl just as a huge snake-like tail protrudes from the shadows. It crushes right where I was, was previously kneeling. I watch in horror as the little girl floats into the air. She peer she like she's like a puppet connected to strings. Out of the shadows, a large toad-like animal with a snake tail moves towards me, its yellow eyes narrow narrow, focusing on me. What's that? Move, damn it! I drag I'm dragged up and uh, by my arm. By my arm, just as the monster lashes its tail towards me, it barely misses us. Is it a hobby of yours to put yourself in danger? Or are you just stupid? What is that? What do you think? It's a demon! A demon? Shino doesn't seem phased at all and turns his attention to his small fox. Kid, hold him on for a sec. Are you crazy? Your fox is supposed to hold off that? The fox jumps between us, and the demon flinches. There's no time for you to get back to the castle. It's already got your scent. Listen, you stay right behind me. Don't move, no matter what happens. Got it? He doesn't wait for me to spawn before pulling out a book. By the authority of Morris, you whose soul has been saturated in darkness shall be judged. She now grabs a sword. And his as rest and begins to glow. Because or cleaved. The demon wanders right as its body shakes the earth with each movement. We're going to be crushed. I grab onto his shirt, his shirt, and the creature makes contact with his blade. There are flashes in the bright color that I, the same bright color I saw earlier. Of war, the demon disappears. Leaving only the bodies of a snake, a toad, and a little girl. The horde, spine chilling feeling in the air, instantly vanishes, and a, calm a calmness surrounds us. I watch as Shino sees his sword and walks towards the body of the girl. It is, is she? This little girl went missing by the river years ago. Mystery solved. Shino's voice seems jaded. But he's all he's extremely careful in jail when he picks up the girl the, the, her body years back she looks like she's just fallen asleep she doesn't look the demon's power was preserving her form they do that they do much worse but she couldn't be more than five years old you think age matters to those creatures as far as they're concerned the younger the better Shino begins walking with the lifeless body in his arms. Where are you taking her? She needs to be laid to rest. Children are their favorite bait. Until her body is cleansed and the rest of her soul goes to the world. She's just a lord to be used again. How awful. That's why they're demons. I want to help. I want to help you bear her, bury her. She just stops and turns towards me. I appreciate your intentions, but you're a demon magnet. We'd be interrupted by at least one demon before we could finish the ceremony. Kit, get her home. I'll handle this. With that, Shino walks away, and the fox tugs at my hem, uh, the hem of my cloak. I follow him and ask him on my eye. Well, try not to think 
of what that poor child endured before death. Why aren't the gods so cruel? How could they let something like this happen? What can I do to stop this from happening again? Kit brings me back to my room. I try not. I try to get some sleep, but the little girl's face keeps showing up in my mind. It takes a long time before I, my weary body begins to give out. I'm in a void where all, even the darkness black, darkness black would shine out like light, and my steps are heavy and they lead nowhere. Where am I? Who am I? I look at the surroundings, but there's nothing to see. It's emptiness. Hello? The sounds barely feel like the, the, it lays my body, my mouth. It's like the darkness is suffocating, even my, uh, my voice. No, can you, anyone hear me? It's as if I'm, I myself am being swallowed whole. Oh, is anyone there? I begin to run. My heart is racing. Panic is filling me to my core. Hello? What am I doing? Why am I here? Is this hell? As I'm running, I see someone standing in a distance. It's a Soyet fi figured shroud in darkness. Originally, it would be a cause of concern, but I'm scared. I don't want to be alone. I can't be alone. Not again. Don't leave me here again. Please, please leave me. Don't leave me. I run towards the figure and gasp as it's cl close. As soon as it disappears into a thick mist, a suit. I think I know who that is. It circles around me before filling the area with a heavy, smug colored fog. Look at you. So fearful of the dark. My blood runs cold when I hear the familiar voice. Ryan. Did you think that you could find solace here? Everything rushes, uh, rushes back to, to me. The memories of losing my family, falling in love with that monster, and being betrayed by him. My fists tie in as my vision fills with tears. The contrast between my tears and the surrounding darkness makes, it, it makes them shimmer like stars in my eyes. You can't wake up from this nightmare, Celeste. You'll never be free of this darkness. No, no. You will be consumed. And I'll be right here, watching you as you break. I hear the gunshots surrounding at me, and the screams and cries of my family. You're worthless. You're useless. You could save your family. You could even save yourself. Just give up, and let me destroy you. Nope. Love yourself enough to let go. I can't take this. Maybe it's best if I disappear. Maybe I should give up. Maybe I should break. What am I thinking? Did I really go through all this just to blow out like a blow out like a coward? No, I'm not a damsel in stress. No, I'm not broken. Arrog I'm not a broken, arrogant girl. I'm not giving you the last laugh. I wa I woke up at the mist, the mist that is circling around me like a vulture's. My teeth grind, uh, grind from the rage as I lift a single mill finger in the air. With a fire in my being, I fill my lungs with air, air. Screw you. At this time, my voice echoes throughout the spans of what seems like eternity. It feels like a scream res uh, resounds throughout the entire universe. You think you could break me? I'll never give you the pleasure of watching me fall. Even if I do shatter, it will be me bringing, uh, bringing about my own demise. And I will be dragging you, you mangled corpse, to hell with me. The world around me begins to glow, and my body feels like it's on fire. Never estimate a goddess. I'm radiating an energy that I never experienced, yet an energy that I sense only belongs to me. Next moment, I feel my soul crack even more. I cough up what seems, it seems like blood, but it's not. 
life essence power? Whatever it is, I don't care. I'm going to kill him. He's not going to escape me again. Even if it destroys me, I will avenge my family. Even if every part of my being breaks apart, I will make him suffer. He'll pay for what he did to me. I lift my hands towards the mist. Don't. The instant I hear his voice, it's like all energy leaves me. I fall on my knees and the universe opens. I'm surrounded by just a glistening stars. And I'm in what looks to be the greenhouse in some kind. My hair is glowing. No, my whole, whole body is shim uh, shimmering in pure light. Terrors gleam in my uh, like light from the heavens, fall from my eyes, and land on my hand. The next moment, a large gel hand covers my own. I know it hurts. I know you're angry, but you must be patient. Patient? He'll destroy my life. I know. He, he destroyed my life. He took everything from me. Everyone I loved. <laughs> Celeste. He'll pay for what he did to me. The man, his hand tied on my own. Don't destroy yourself over an illusion. He looks at, uh, up at the man. I look up at the man. Illusion? His eyes seem to hold the spans of the universe in, the him, uh, in them. Isn't this real? He shakes his head in response. He feels so familiar, but it's painful. It's painful to look at him. My heart is filled with both yearning and anger. Then, are you illusion too? Are you some sort of protector that I'm created to get to get me through the, this dream? His silence is my only answer. However, something. However, something within me. Okay, I need to do that. However, something with me knows he's real. My mouth opens. It's like another person's speaking to, uh, speaking for me, for, from me. Why are you here in my hill? I can't watch you shatter again. Okay, so I can't watch you shatter again. Again, I didn't. I didn't call for you. <coughs> The moment I say this, the barrier shoots between us, practically throwing him out of the greenhouse. The distance between us goes as he pushes against the barrier. I will get what I'm owed. You will, but you must. Okay, I need. Okay, it's still there. I'll get what I owed. He places his hand on the barrier. And pain expression covers his face. You will, but you must be careful. This is just a dream. It's an illusion. But what you were about to do was not. You mustn't awaken yet. I cannot watch you break again. Please. What is this feeling? Who is a man? Uh, who is this man to me? Then stop watching me. <laughs> I'm going to do whatever it, ta it takes to achieve my goal, even if it means bringing my own self to ruin. If this is a dream, then it's going. It's time for me to wake up and face a nightmare. With that, I'll stand and keep up at the mist that circles my barrier. Vengeance will be mine. You hear me, mon you monster. I will destroy you. My vow echoes throughout the stars, and I feel the slightest bit of myself break in response. Try again. And that was Shattered Soul. If you like my content, please subscribe, like, do, help a lot, and comment below. I'll see you guys next time.